Welcome back to Underground Music Review. Uh, my name's Will, and um, today we're going to go through um, how to replicate a grot box, um, what a grot box is, and uh, why they're important. Um, let's get straight into it. So, well, as music producers, our aim is to make you know quality sounding music um, that can be played on many different sound systems. These sound systems might be anything from a cheap pair of earbuds or a large um, sound system at a festival. Usually when, um, when, when, when producers, when we get taught to make electronic music, we're really switched on about making music for the club. Um, however, one thing that can be quite overlooked is the way that people consume music outside of the club. Um, you know, like they're using these cheap mediums such as earbuds, headphones, Bluetooth speakers, or in their cars. So the term grot box um, is literally just a slang term um, for a low quality speaker um, by producers back in the day. And um, many studios sort of all over the world have got, got a pair of grot boxes or have got some kind of low quality speaker in their studio. And what they'll do, they'll actually reference their mixes on them to make sure that when the music goes out to the masses, um, it's actually um, going to sound good, not just on big um, expensive high quality audio systems that it's going to sound good on these cheaper systems as well um, for instance like um, Michael Jackson had a couple of albums uh, that were just produced solely on um, a set of grot boxes which are the aura tones um, which are still around today actually um, the thing is with the the smaller lower quality um, speakers they sound so much different than a club system and um, when we're making music, we're really focused on, you know, that we're not deafening people or ripping the subs in, in clubs, um, you know, because if a DJ takes a, a, a punt on your track and plays it out at a big festival or a big club and it doesn't sound good on the system, you know, he's risking your rep his reputation, your reputation, um, and it just might not match up to the track that comes before or comes after it. Now... Most producers have probably got a set of high quality speakers or um, monitors um, or headphones in their studio um, to produce music. So when you're listening to your productions, you're actually a, a listening to a really high quality version of that of that track. Um, but sort of how many normal um, music consumers do you know that have got a set of high end studio monitors or a high end set of headphones? There's not many of them. And um, the thing with these small speakers or earbuds or low quality um, speakers, they don't have a great bass response um, and sometimes the highs are a little bit cut off um, just because these mediums are not focused on accurate listening like the, um, the products that we use to produce music. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that our music really translates or references well on these consumer um, speakers. Electronic music um, can be quite bass heavy and um, this can be a problem with a smaller speaker because the, really, the, the smaller the speaker, the less bass you hear or the less bass you feel. And um, generally, like um, bass is on the lower end of the frequency spectrum. But there are some tricks that you can, um, you can do to bring your, your bass up into the perception of um, higher up in the, in the frequency ranges just so that you can actually hear the bass on these um, little sets of earbuds or um, Bluetooth speakers, etc. So this is quite a broad um, topic of, of mixing and stuff and you know I could be here all day um, talking to you about it. But what I'll do is um, I'll just show you um, how to create a grot box and uh, how to imitate one in Logic. Um, and that way what you can do is throughout your productions you can actually use this technique to check and make sure that most of your elements can be heard um, in in the um, in the smaller frequency range that gets put out on these earbuds or um, on these lower quality speakers. So the first thing we want to do, um, we want to pull up our master channel. So I've just got this um, this track on the master here. What I'll do is I'll just turn this limiter off, um, this EQ and this compressor. Um, I've actually got a reference track in here um, that will um, be, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to show you um, what the what effect the um, grot box has. So what we'll do anyway is we'll open up um, a channel EQ in Logic and um, we've got the frequency spectrum in front of us. So what we'll do is we'll start off um, by rolling off the lows on this track um, or on this EQ to imitate the grot box. And what we'll do is we'll push this right up to 230 hertz, um, around that anyway. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just change the frequency curve to 36 dB. 
Um, and then, so that's taking care of the base. Um, and what we're doing here is we're just removing the base, um, just similar to a lot of these um, cheaper speakers or um, earbuds, etc. So, and then what we want to do um, is uh, roll off the highs down to about 2600. So we roll it off to about there, and then we'll put this curve um, to 36. Now, what we've got here is um, we're imitating the grot box. So we're imitating a cheap, dirty speaker that we as producers hate. Um, but it's really important for us to listen to our mixes on them. So what I'll do is I'll just loop a bit of my track here that we've got that we're going to reference from. And um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn it off play you a bit of the track and then we'll turn it on halfway through and then what it, what it will do is it will um, just show you um, what the grot box effect actually is okay all right So depending on um, what listening medium you're on um, is how well that will sound. Um, if you're on earbuds, then you won't hear a lot of the bass and um, a lot of the low end and stuff like that. But um, what we can do, what I'll do is I'll turn this grot box on and um, play the track and then you'll get the effect. And I'll just pull it back off. And back on. Now what you'll notice is the lower frequencies are um, completely gone, um, but you can actually still hear the bass line um, coming through, um, and that's mainly because I've just added a, a I've really I've boosted the mid the mid elements of my bass, um, which probably hit around this between two and five hundred um, hertz. And what this does, it just enables the bass to be heard on speakers without bass, basically. So now you've got your um, grot box made, you can um, save that as a preset in um, in Logic on your channel EQ. Um, what you, good practice is to keep it on your master channel, um, keep it turned off and then just turn it back on when you need it. Um, keep it the last thing in the chain um, so that you're um, so that you're the other side of the limiter and stuff like that, so that that's the last last thing that you're hearing. Um, and, and all it is is just a simple tool um, that enables you to check your mixes um, and just to check to see if all your elements actually are there, um, if they're going to be played on a, on a lower quality speaker. Um, and it's not the be all and end all of, um, of mixing, it's just another little um, trick you can have up your sleeve um, just to check how your mixes are going to sound um, elsewhere outside of the studio. So thanks for watching and um, yeah, good luck.